This week, in the garage, we're doing nothing fun. I have door harness to replace. We're gonna add a couple of gussets to our jack mount. And then I think that's all we need before the uh, truck is ready to go. Let's figure out how to take a door panel off. This is a door panel we're moving. YouTube, let's figure out how to take this thing off. Shout out to my guy, Garrett Albertson. We are figuring out how to get a winch onto the truck. Since I am two-wheel drive, don't like the idea of getting stuck anywhere. I like my big skid plate to where I have easy access to everything in the engine bay. That's made a bunch of stuff really, really easy to fix, especially out on the trail. That'll be super handy. So I don't want to mount a winch in front of the block. He's got his mounted up by the core support because his bumper goes up higher than mine. So what I'm going to do is put the plate that the mint or the winch mounts on. I already have a tube up there, so this will probably be pretty easy to do. Put the plate up there, mount the winch upside down, easily run all the wires and stuff to the battery and all that, but have the winch mounted upside down so it kind of hangs you know, down in front of the block, and then if I need to repair anything, move it, unbolt it, flip it up top, easy peasy. So I gotta do that, and then I gotta find a way to mount some Max Tracks boards. So what I'm thinking is I wanna put like a little shelf right here that's high enough i can slide tubs and stuff under put the max tracks boards up top set it up so it'll like bolt in over here somehow and then i think for the jack mount this will be pretty easy to fix up today i'm just gonna add one more gusset okay youtube so i need a 90 degree pick oh dude i think matt has all my panel removal stuff he does doesn't he oh that sucks okay 90 degree pick so what happened on this door panel is on the rear door harnesses, the 12th gen F-150s, I don't know about the newer trucks, in this door harness down here. Oh, that's not too bad. Nice. Uh, the door harness has a little plastic piece that's supposed to kink or keep it from like kinking. And what happens is that little plastic piece will rub against the wiring harness and just break the whole thing which is super annoying obviously eight millimeter six millimeter it's the smallest oh yes let's go got some sixes this guy really thought we weren't going to use power tools for this Are you kidding me oh we got eight millimeter Ooh, that's a long boy huh we got some six millimeters so there's one of the six mils here's the other six mil Here's the last six mil. Hopefully this goes really quick. Now what? So I gotta pull this guy up, get down in this corner. Oh no, it's just pulling the whole door up. <laughs> there it is. Get that out of there. Then up and out, boom. Uh-oh, still connected via this guy. I didn't watch the instructions on how to. Yeah, they put that dyno mat all around there, huh? Party wants to see if I can just peel that off and get around it. I should probably do it the right way though, huh? Oh, those two tabs. Well, I mean, do I have to do that? Oh, dude. So I need to get back behind this. Okay, you're just gonna stay up there for right now. This is messy. What if I go like, oh no. That's not what I wanted to do. <sighs> yeah, stay in there. And I think what I can do is if I can just set this over here. Okay, that's fine. Now I have to peel all this off, which is gonna be gross. Uh, okay, so that wasn't supposed to happen, but whatever. Let's very carefully peel all this back. That'll stay there. So don't need to pull that off. This is all icky. I don't wanna pull the speaker out. That's the issue. So the window guy comes out and around there. Pull that out and around. Get that out of there. Then what is this one? That pops out with that. And so I have this one goes to the window. So I got that window one. And then I have this the window one with a couple clips that go in there. Oh, dude. Is this going to be wired in there all stupid or something? It is wired in there all stupid or something, isn't it? The way they did this dyno mat is atrocious. Okay, so I have to get it up under here. And there's supposedly four plugs in here. Where's the other two plugs? This is one of them. Can I just take all of this matting off? I really want to just cut it off around the dyno mat so I can just get in there. 
So I got three out of four plugs, and I think the fourth plug goes to your line. Why is there always something? The shop that did my stereo, it's not the factory connection on there, it's a different speaker apparently, so I have to put together my own piece there. Um, I didn't video when I replaced my stereo, probably because there were too many frustrated bad words in it, and I hate wiring. The wiring done on this truck for the stereo, absolutely horrendous. So having to go through more fixing on that is annoying, but whatever, we'll just do it. Where does this piece of tape end? I hate wiring. Old harness is out. Actually, let's get this all lined up on everything except the door speakers. Okay, so that goes like that. Oh, yeah, okay, so you have all these pins in there that are just a huge pain in the butt. This one goes all the way to that. Okay, that's good. Those go right there. And then we have this one that goes to right here. Yeah. Okay, we got one in there. Put that through there. Boom, boom. This is going kind of better than I expected. That goes there. This goes there. That's everything, right? One, two, three. This goes up. Oh no, I forgot how this goes in there. What have I done? Actually, I'm not gonna lie, I feel like I did this last time too. It was like one of those, oh no, how does this go in things. Okay, there's this. Pop this little rubber guy back in here. Bam! I just can't remember if it goes up through here or not. So I guess we'll figure that out once we get the dynamat back on there. Okay, let's find uh, an extension cord so that we can plug this guy in. Whoa, no way. What? Okay, time to pull this door speaker out there. So, the wiring for the door speakers just popped right out. This is the side I cut. This is what just fell out of the door speaker. So now we're gonna pull the door speaker out and figure out what the heck just happened there. Cause I'm pretty sure the speaker wasn't working anyway. And if it wasn't really plugged in, that's probably the reason why. Also, kind of like, I get that they put this dyno mat here to be real nice and fancy with it, but it kind of sucks. Like it's so heavy, which is why it works. Like I get it, but there's a small part of me that's kind of like, what if I just pulled all this off? Cause this is like minimal. I mean, that already tore right there. That sucks. I need a mag. I need some magnets. Stay there. Please be a four. No, be a five. No, four. Really? So bigger than a five, but not a six. I hate working on cars. It sucks. A seven thirty seconds. Yay. Okay. Also. Watch me get this last door speaker just working today. That would be huge. So this is gonna be my guess. My speaker's not actually blown out. Just the wiring was terrible and it fell apart. Oh yeah, dude. We're gonna assume that black goes to ground. That's what we're working with today, I guess. Come on, puppy. I wanna be annoyed with this audio shop and how terrible all their work is. But at the same time, that was 10 years ago, and maybe it just didn't hold up. Like, how much can you really expect that kind of stuff to hold up over 10 years? It was eight years ago. I have had Bessie for eight years. How crazy is that? There's that. Orange goes to purple and white. Black goes to blue. There. That's how we know what we're doing. Get in there. Okay, so video things I need to do. I need to do a whole walk through the truck. I need to talk about the engine now, that it's not supercharged anymore. If you think of anything else, let me know. We will connect these guys. I really hope this makes one of my speakers work again. Connect this guy here. Yeah. Boom. Connect this guy over here. Boom. Cool. Get a couple of these started. We got a fixed door speaker. Did not expect to have to do that today. So I knew that a couple of my door speakers were out. I thought it was because they just went bad, because like I said, this is eight years ago. I did not think that it would be because the wiring had just fallen apart. But here we are. What the heck? Oh, my magnet. Okay, so now I guess we'll stick. We will use said magnet to stick that up there. And ground goes to the blue and purple so we decided those are still toasty so we got ground to ground we did have to do this on the other door 
I'm remembering now because I thought it would be a good idea to do those connectors in case we had to replace the speakers. It would be easier. That is what I was getting at. Okay, so that's in there. That's right there. And I think if this goes right here, that means this connects here, right? Oh, they go on the inside. That's there. And then you have this. You have this. And you have this. And then this one. All right. Well, let's just start putting everything back together and see where it pops out. So that one goes right there. Cool. Yep. Cool. Come on, baby. There it is. It's going great. Okay. Cool. Why aren't you? There's something up here. I don't want to pull it off because I don't want that guy to get freaking. Oh, bro, just like that. I think we're good. Cool. 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 Then where's that panel? Here's that panel. I guess before I pop this back in, I should make sure everything works. Huh? So make sure that door open, light is off. It is off. There's no doors open. Windows work. Sick. Which means I can plug this fuse back in. When this stops working, I have to unplug the fuse that has like the dimmer lights and everything on it because when it wears through and thinks that your rear door is open, your dome lights just stay on like while you're driving. That's super annoying at night. The other thing is the cargo light comes on and I have this Baja Designs S2 extra bright boy up there. That doesn't bode well with the people behind me having all those lumens just go straight in their face. I get to plug this back in now, which makes me happy. Because I like when things work the way they're supposed to. What fuse is this? Fuse 15. Okay, cargo lights are back. That's sick. Let's put this tab back in. I'm very interested to see, I'm not gonna try it right now, but I'm very interested to see if my stereo works. Another thing is fixed. Do I try and weld up that gusset today? Yes, I do. Man, I already got the welding card over there and everything. Let's freaking go. What we have to do, we need to make a little gusset plate for the jack mount because it still vibrates a little bit. And all that plate is going to be is, so I thought laying around somewhere, I had a piece of three inch flat that was already cut at the angle that I need for this. And I don't think I had it. I have this angled piece, but I feel like that's way too steep for the jack mount. I mostly just want to get this done because it's going to be a really quick fix and give me a lot of peace of mind. So if I'm lucky, that'll be the exact piece and size of flat steel that I need. But I have a feeling I'm not going to get that lucky. Ah, uh, that's kind of steep. It might be that piece, actually. I mean, those are actually spaced pretty well. If I can just get one gusset down there. No, this isn't going to be long enough. That is way too short. That's the right idea. That's sort of the right angle. That's a really easy spot to get to. This, there's no way this is it. Because this is like thick boy quarter inch steel, and I don't think that's what I used. Seven inches. So I said seven inches. Let's get our 20 degrees first. This is kind of the redneck way of doing it. So 19 degrees, and I need to be how far away from the edge? Three inch on the long side. We got three inch, boom. And then I need 19 degrees. Okay, so we're gonna align the shop on the workbench. I think I did this last time, and this is just a terrible way to do this, but whatever. I need to get it to 19, right there. No, back a little bit, back a little bit. Come on, where's 19? This is arguably one of the dumber ways to do this. Did this just die? I know you didn't just die. Yeah, die. Okay, whatever. Can you see my little ticks there? I got my little ticks right there. Three inches on the long side is what I wanted. So put that tick on the workbench, slap this guy up top, 
tilted until I hit 19, hit that line, that will now be a 19 degree line. Uh, in foot flops, which isn't gonna happen, so now I gotta go put socks on. But yeah, let's turn into a whole project real quick. Boom. And just like that, you have a 19 degree line. Ah, F it, I don't need socks. I'm a man. Shake them out, make sure there's no spiders in there. I'm gonna do this the kind of lazy way. Um, I don't feel like moving all of my stuff that I have right here, so I'm just gonna clamp this to the workbench here. Pray it doesn't move. Bada bing, bada boom. Cut off wheel goes zoom. Cool. Shiny steel. This is shiny. Okay. Test fit. No way. Uh, I went too steep. So I'm gonna tack it in right there and kind of weld it up and around that guy. No, we're not. We're gonna go right off the side there. Yeah, that'll work. We are running low on gas. Okay. Whoops. Does my ground just suck? How about this? That's just as good as it's gonna get. All right. Is that wire speed too fast? Let's try it with wire speed. That is horrendous. Dude, I mean, like, it's more solid than it was, but that's so terrible. It's not getting hot at all. Oh my god. This sucks. Let's see if we can preheat it. Okay, she's glowing. No. Less wire speed is definitely better. There's a big, ugly glob. That's terrible. Those will hold, but those are probably two of the worst welds I've ever done. And I suspect it's because I'm out of gas. Let's grind this guy down a little bit. Ah! I mean... The important part of that isn't going anywhere, so whatever. I don't even think that's worth trying to go over and clean up. Especially since that's just gonna get cut off in the future. Whatever, I feel better about off-roading with that now. It's not going anywhere. Get a better welder. More hotter is more better. By more hotter, I mean something hotter than a 110 hobby welder. Especially when you're trying to weld through 120 wall and quarter inch steel. I am under-equipped, I need more power, whatever, it got the job done, and I do not have to worry about that wobbling as much anymore. Oh boy. Okay, stop some paint on this bad boy, clean some stuff up, and we'll be good to go. Looks good to me. Oh, I still need to do these panels at some point. Those welds are so bad. So here's what we got. Uh, still working with this spot down here. Out of that guy. It's not, is it hot? Oh, shit, I just painted that, I'm stupid. It's not going anywhere. What was happening was since, I can't even see it, but the two plates that I have under there, I have one here and then one there, and it holds it pretty well, but I don't know if it's just because it's long and skinny and thin or what, but the very bottom was flexing a little bit, which I don't think is an issue, but I figured one more little plate there won't hurt. What I'm gonna do is when I pull the bedrock out, I'm gonna flip this over and I'm gonna do basically pieces like that, but running down to the tubes underneath. So it looks cleaner up top, doesn't really matter, but it'll look cleaner up top and it'll pretty much box everything in down in there. So um, I do like that location for the jack. It's in there nice and clean. I need to figure out a cover so it's not all nasty. I should probably do this today too because that's only drilling a couple holes. I can do that quick. Let's clean ah, this guy back up. It's also so much easier to get in and out than before. Yeah, that's not going anywhere. It's ugly, but it works. So ultimately, it doesn't matter. All right, whatever, it's not going anywhere. And if it does, that sucks. The mount itself isn't moving. I think that's the thing that sketches me out. Is it the jack moves? So it feels like the mount is moving, but I don't think the mount is moving at all. I'm not welding anything else today. Cool. All right, let's put this panel back on. 
and then we will be good to go. Cool. I think I just checked off like three things on my list. That's pretty cool. Okay. Um, let's put everything back together. Where you go? It's over there. New holes drilled. Gang, gang. Okay. Oh. Cool. I have a little more than I still act like to do. It's a bunch of ATF. This is also ATF for some reason. What is this? 5W. I need to cycle through this. 5W20? Whatever. It's oil. If something explodes and I need to have oil, I have oil. Not going anywhere. Put the tire back. Ooh. So many metal shavings in this tire. And I'm probably gonna cut my hand open, so I'm gonna use some gloves. Hmm. Oh my <clears throat> Cool. Nice. Everything is all centered up now. So we got our gussets done. And I honestly think that's the last thing I needed to do before getting the truck out. Like I think it's ready to run now. It is good for a shakedown. That's tight. That's good. Right in the middle there. So I did adjust fluid holder, jack mount. So GT manifold swap, when I do that, I do the water inlet swap and then eight gang switch panel, which means everything I need to get done to take this guy out is done, which means she's ready to go. Heck yes. Um, what I really want to do before I go get out in the sticks is I need some traction boards. I really need to figure out a winch. Those obviously aren't major priorities right now, but something I'd really like to have if I'm out by myself. I have little metal shavings all over me. That's good. She's ready to roll, which is awesome. Um, it feels like forever since she's been ready to get out in the dirt. So that's a really good feeling. That's pretty cool, I think. Oh, boy. Let's freaking go. Heck yeah. 